Good evening, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful, thankful Thursday. I am so excited to have my honey with me this week. We are excited to bring you this great content. And I'd like to, hey, welcome you to the Men and Women Are Different Facebook Live event. Uh, we hope that this content will spark some rich and enlightening dialogue between you and your spouse. So please click the share to invite others to join our little party and let us know if there is content or subjects that you would like to hear more about. We are, I am my, my <clears throat> excuse me, and Live the Life is on Facebook and Instagram. So follow us so you don't miss any content or events that we will be sharing with you. So good evening. My name is Miko Page. I am with Live the Life, where we help to strengthen marriages and families. And I'm Christopher Page. I've been married to this beautiful woman for 22 years now. Yay! We dated for about four years. We were engaged for one year. And we have three teenagers in the house, so you know it's always rocking here. And things that we enjoy as, as a couple, we enjoy comedy shows, uh, playing tennis, yeah. and just taking evening walks together. Yes, even though he seems to always beat me at tennis. Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited to talk about how men and women are different and how that can impact your marital relationship. So first, let's talk about the hardware, if you will, and that is the actual structure of the brain. It is different. From birth, male and female brains are different. So for boys, while they're in utero, in their mother's womb, the chemical testosterone severs the connecting fibers between the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. And this makes the male brain highly compartmentalized. So as an example, ladies, give your husband a task. He'll focus on that one thing very well and he'll do it accordingly. Now, if you give him five things to do at the same time, <laughs> Well, let's just say he might not be as fluid with multitasking, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Guys, in a sense, have compartments. Uh, there's a compartment for money, house, sports, his job. Imagine a picture of a square waffle. There are these individual sections or boxes within the waffle, and none of those compartments touches one another. Now, female brains, on the other hand, are highly networked. I want you to think of a bowl of spaghetti. Everything touches everything. You don't know where one noodle begins and another noodle ends, okay? So, you know, in our brains, the car is connected to my childhood, which is connected to my job, which is all connected to my trainer at the gym. And that totally makes sense to me. And, and all along, I'm wondering, what does a gym have to do with your childhood, right? But also, since our brains are highly connected and networked, we can quickly and efficiently multitask. We can cook to get dinner, talk on the phone, pick up on a conversation that is walking you know, past us, take care of the kids, you know, check the mail. We can do all of this at the same time. Now, let's talk about behaviors. And when I talk about, when we talk about behaviors, we're going to be talking in general terms, okay? So generally, as it relates to men and women, all right? If the reverse is true in your relationship, great, all right? So listen up. How we recharge, that's the first difference. How do we recharge? Well, typically, females recharge or rejuvenate by talking, and bonding and connecting, okay? This helps to release a chemical called oxytocin, which is considered a love hormone. Under stress, we like to talk it out. And research indicates that women tend to talk it out and men tend to think through problems. I can remember maybe about 
oh, 10 years ago. At that point, we had been married around 11 years. And Chris would, when, when we had an argument or a disagreement or there was something on his mind and I knew there was something on his mind, I would want to talk about it. You know, let's talk about it. Let's get it on the table. Let's deal with it right now. And it made me uncomfortable if we didn't have that verbal exchange. Hmm. Well, what God showed me was Miko, Chris needs time to think it through and to process. Because, ladies, we can think and process and talk all at the same time. And so what God charged me to do was instead of being all anxious and worried and, hey, what's going on? Miko, pray for Chris. Obviously, there's something going with on with him. You don't have to know what it is. I know what it is. So pray for your husband. Well, it's kind of hard to be agitated at somebody if you're praying for them at the same time. And I had to trust God. And it has been such a blessing to me personally just to take the step back to pray for him. And then nine times out of 10, he would come and share what was going on anyway. And most of the time it didn't have anything to do with me. And even if it was an issue that we had, God gave me a chance to calm down and give me the words to speak because I had, I said what I wanted to say when I wanted to say it, <laughs> it wouldn't have been very honoring probably. So, <laughs> so with all of that being said, man, so we re rejuvenate for the most part in our nothing box and it's a good place to be there's nothing absolutely <laughs> nothing in this box when stress ladies your husband uh probably doesn't want to talk about things at that particular point he just wants to decompress zone out and just 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 go into this place where he can just recharge imagine two men playing golf fishing, watching TV, going to a sporting event and not saying a word. That's how we operate. We don't have to talk. We're just in that nothing box and just zoned out. Now, ladies, that is hard for us to believe. How can you say nothing, do nothing, think nothing? That is foreign to us because for most of us, our brains never take a break. We don't shut it off. We're constantly thinking. We're constantly connected. And to be perfectly honest, I'm a little jealous of this nothing box. I wish I had one. Now, <laughs> it's not for sale. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so now let's transition and talk about intimacy. All right. How do we spell intimacy as men and women? For men, pretty simple. It's one word and it's three letters. What might that be? You guessed it. Sex. <laughs> and for ladies, it's one word, but it's not a three letter word. It's a four letter word called talk. OK, now it's not that one of us is right and one of us is wrong. It's just that we're different. And our differences are just as intense. His desire and drive for sex is just as intense as my desire for conversation. Now, husbands, your wife is not communicating with you for facts. OK, she is communicating to bond and connect. And as women, we are knit to need to have that emotional release. It is not a desire. It's not, oh, it would be nice to have. It is a legitimate need that we have. Now, man, you would agree with me on this point. Generally, we have a need for sexual release. So, ladies, sex is connected to your husband's emotions. However, in a healthy marriage, when the man successfully touches the heart of his wife by talking, she typically will reciprocate and offer more sex. And conversely, when a woman cheerfully engages in sex, your husband will typically want to talk more. So the key, so the key to getting what you want is to give your spouse what that person wants. So learn how to master this intimacy dance because ultimately it's a win-win. Absolutely. Amen to that. Amen to that. Now, also going back to the 
the the communication and the talking one one tip that my husband gave me and i thought this was funny we were in and having a conversation and at one point he said miko could you please just land the plane you just you keep circling around the airport could you just land the plane and one of the things and my husband chris works in 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 human resources and so he's talking to people all the time and at the time i was a stay-at-home mom so i was thirsty for adult conversation but what i learned was i know i have a gazillion more words than he does in the course of a day i need to 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 share and that's why it's important that i have other relationships outside of my marital relationships so i can give my girlfriends and my mom and my sister all of my words and for and reserve some of you know my most important conversation for those words with you know chris if it's something i really want to share with him but all my other words I can get those out with my girlfriend. So little tip there. Okay, now let's talk about sexuality. It has been said that when it comes to sexuality, men are like microwaves and women are like crock pots. So let's talk about that for a second. What is a crock pot? Also known as a slow cooker. Okay, now just so and just in case you're not familiar with how a slow cooker or a crock pot works okay you have to plan in advance your meal you are not taking chicken out of the freezer and having a meal in an hour with a crock pot okay you have to plan your meal you have to prep your ingredients okay you have to identify on your crock pot out of all the knobs and adjustments what the perfect you know settings need to be for your meal you need to make sure you have had time okay you need at least four hours even if you're gonna cook it on fast okay or eight if you're going the the long ride the slow cook route all right and then after all of that you can set it on warm to keep your food warm now the payoff is generally when you've had a meal in a crock pot it's been pretty good right right it's it's delicious okay so it's it's worth it where am i going with this gentlemen the process to connect to her heart and her physical intimacy starts and her desire to engage sexually it starts long before the act itself that day the tone of voice you take with her does she feel like she's connected to you if there was an argument yesterday and it is unresolved guess what that may be a barrier to physical intimacy so this is all part of touching her heart, which enables her to be more receptive to physically offer herself to you. All right, look, so that was good for, <laughs> for the brothers out there. There's nothing fancy or complex for us, right? It is pretty simple. It is as simple as one, two, three. Ready. <laughs> so basically for us, it's not that complicated. However, we should embrace the differences because God knew what he was doing when he created us, right? But don't allow our differences to create division, but allow it to generate more conversation to understand, grow, and unite as married couples. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and in our 21-year marriage, we have really tried to allow the the holy spirit to minister those things to us we didn't go through a class like this for the first you know 15 16 years of our marriage and so we studied at the school of the holy spirit in experience so the quicker that you can incorporate some of these thoughts and really a greater level of understanding your us will significantly benefit and be blessed as a result and your children because they're watching you. So I want to give you um, a phenomenal, share a phenomenal resource. So there are two books. One is entitled For Women Only, and the other book is entitled For Men Only. They were authored by Shanti and Jeff Feldheim, who Shanti is a Harvard educated researcher, and they scoured the country. Um, surveyed thousands of men and women to find out what are we thinking and what do we wish the opposite sex knew about us and our thoughts and behaviors. I just was introduced to this book about six months or so, these books about six months or so ago. 
I wish I had known this information when I was a teenager. I will have our kids read these books. There, there's so many gold nuggets just about relating and how God knit men and women together. So the books are called For Women Only and For Men Only by Shanti and Jeff Feldheim. Now, if you're not a reader, I just don't have time to read. Like, you know, we have three teenagers and we work, so it's hard to read. Audio books are amazing. You can find these books on audio. And if you have an app called Hoopla, it's a free app. If you have a library card, you can log into your digital library and for free with your library card and you can download and listen to audio books you can listen to music videos what have you but it's a way for free you can listen to those two books please also remember that live the life is offering an hour and a half free virtual marriage coaching we are here for you and would love to to partner with you wherever you are in your marital relationship if you know a couple who is stressed or feels hopeless point them to us. We would love to love on them and walk with them to help them restore hope. Any final words, dear? Yes. Hey, ladies. He's ready. <laughs> Till next time, be safe and love well. You're still on.